All right, guys, what's up? So we've got the beloved Epson F2100. So many people have this printer. This is an amazing printer. So what I'm gonna share with you is not by any part Epson's fault, the printer's fault, it's my fault. Long story short, we had another business that we had started that really took off and almost took over from what we were doing. And so we stopped using the Epson. Around October of 2020, the printer did its last print we had just bought ink two white cartridges so this is basically what you're looking at if the printer just runs on its own brand new white ink six months later doing its cleanings on a regular basis you're gonna be left with this much ink here's the weird thing there is a lot of ink left in here for what this thing says it has left so that's that's a whole nother discussion but I feel like this is not accurate at all. The magenta ran out around February and basically went on standby with its original inks still in it. So what you're seeing here, this happened on a regular basis up until February and then it stopped. So for two months, it just sat here out of magenta because I gave up. Um, I Somebody on the DTG forum offered me one of their inks. They sent me their magenta just so that I could get this uh, cleaned up try something that I've been wanting to try um, and then we're gonna clear the lines now I just wanna say there's a setting in here I don't know if you know but if you wanna get to the head in order to do this process you have to actually move the platen out of the way so here's how you do it we're gonna we're gonna get this prepped we're gonna go to uh, cleaning around the head okay cleaning around the head I hate that this light is just and then we're gonna collect or click yes for platen moves back yes and now see the platen is moving back and out of the way which gives us access to the print head underneath there it comes there's your print head and we're gonna clean that right there that's been sitting for about six months hasn't printed a shirt and it hasn't been cleaned in about two and anybody knows in this uh, in the Epson if it goes two or three days, that thing clogs up. So I'm thinking it's gonna work. And if it does, this is a great video for anybody to see that this $2,500 print head, there is one last thing you can do. And the reason I'm confident about this video is I've done this before. Uh, it wasn't as long of a time frame. It was only a couple weeks in the past. Uh, it worked wonderfully. But now I'm stepping it up a notch and you're gonna see in this video and I'd like to throw a shout out to uh, DTG Printer Parts. He gave me a, a general rundown idea of what he has experienced in the past on how to clean these heads. And so what I did is I took that and made a whole process out of it. So without further ado, let's get into it right now and clean this bad boy out. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build basically using these chemicals. We've got distilled water, Windex, and isopropyl alcohol, this is the 50% version, which will work just fine. Um, you can do the math and, and subsidize from there if you've got the 80%, 70%, whatever, but this is 50. So we're gonna make a mixture out of the three of these things. We're gonna do 75% Windex, 20% distilled water, and 5% alcohol mixed into a tub. All right, and what we're gonna wanna do, let me move this out of the way is we're gonna want to create a platform with these Tupperwares that enables us, right, to essentially create a bowl that goes underneath without touching the print head, like that. And we're gonna fill this up. We're gonna fill it up to the line beforehand, lift it up, have a friend insert the, the uh, Tupperware underneath so that we can shimmy it up so that it's basically sitting where the water level can reach the bottom of the print head and we're going to fill it up with the solution to the line so that it's manageable right if you fill it to the top you're going to spill it everywhere so we've got to fill it to the line leaving some room lifting it up sliding this under some people use print cartridges for example They'll stack their print carts up, right, to create a shim. And from there, we're going to open the top and we're going to 
very carefully from here, fill the rest up while we have a light. See this light? So that we can see, we're gonna put the light in the back, way back here, so that we can see through. That way we can see the water line and we can see through the side of this. We need the clearest one you can get. So I might actually use this one up there. We're going to be looking through the side like a window as we pour the remainder of the liquid from here into the top, right? And it's going to be filling up. It's gonna be filling up. And we're going to watch as the water level, the liquid cleaning level, reaches the bottom of that print head up in there, right? As soon as it touches it, we're gonna go about one millimeter above the bottom of the print head, just so that there's submersion, but not complete submersion to where it gets into the electrical components of the print head. So it's just gonna sit on the surface and clean that print head off. And then it's gonna soak. And we're gonna soak for about 12 hours and I'm going to document with this video throughout the process of exactly what it looks like so that you can see and emulate the same thing. And then we're going to come out and we're going to do a print head cleaning. We're going to start with a heavy and then we're going to do a light and then we're going to do a nozzle check and we're going to see what we get. And I'm wondering because if we can save you 2500 bucks, I think it's worth a like and a follow, don't you? If there's any quality shots here, because I have to do this over a 12-hour period, there's going to be some nighttime as well. So uh, forgive me if there's blurriness at night. You know how these cameras are. Without further ado, let's get right into the project. So this is what it'll start to look like after the, uh, the ink that's been backed up starts coming out of the print head from the solution mix in the Epson F2100. Uh, so I put a light behind it, and I watch, and when... All four of those, uh, well, I think the one, two, three, four, five strips up there that you see, when all five uh, give off ink. Primer, the white's going to come out a lot more than the other colors because it's thicker. Um, but when they all have some residue coming into the uh, Windex solution that I've made. But uh, with, uh, with everything else that I've showed you here, this is the best way and safest way. And if you look you'll see the, sum, the, the Windex is, is barely over the print head. See how it's like a millimeter above the bottom? Um, as those bubbles go away, they'll go away as time goes by and you'll get a better idea of what you're looking at. But you, you don't wanna like submerge all the way up to the bottom of the actual print head mechanism. More so you just want it to cover the base of the print head itself, just like you see here. So I'm gonna zoom back out Right, and that's what we've got. You just want to make sure that it's stable. It's a stable setup. All right, we're about four hours later, and I've just you just leave the printer like this, leave it open. It's going to beep as a reminder that the system is open. That's fine. It's going to say this. Some time has passed. Don't click OK. Just leave it alone. Right. Here we are. As you can see, it's starting to get cloudy, right? And there's slowly this solution's going to turn darker as the black ink and the cyan and magenta mixed with the white. It's uh, it's slowly going to get darker, but as of now, here's where it's at. It's harder to see the print head up there, but it's still there. The bubbles are disappearing, so you can now see what is outlined. We'll come back and periodically check it and document. In the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to gently run the cotton swabs, not scrubbing, just running it along to pull any film off of the bottom of the print head. So we're going to construct a device, a cleaning, kind of like a hook so that it reaches inside so we can dip it inside and underneath the print head and move away any clotted material. Okay, and here is the finished constructed makeshift jimmy rig. So I've taped one Q-tip to the next at a 90 degree angle and this is going to be used as a lever. As you can see, it's going to dip in and we're going to rub like this just and do a sweeping motion 
and sweep along the bottom. This is not required, this step, but it does help expedite the cleaning. So what we're going to do, and having a little light handy is really helpful in seeing what you're doing as this begins to cloud up, or you know, a house light in there. This is going to be dipped down momentarily and we're going to turn it like this, do you see? We're gonna turn it like this. So I'm gonna reposition the camera so you can see. All right, here we go. So using our makeshift, the print head, is easiest to access on this side over here, on this side. So we're going to go down, I don't know if you can see it in there, there it is, and we're going to come over here and we're going to do a sweeping motion, and we're sweeping, do you see that? We're sweeping the bottom of the print head gently to clear away the bubbles so that the printer has free access, or the head has free access to all the chemicals. And then I'm going to move it to the other side now. And I'm going to do the same thing. See how it's sweeping the bubbles away? That's all you wanna do is just sweep all the bubbles away so there are no bubbles along the bottom of the cleaning surface and as you can see the chunks of ink you see it here here some there and on the surface but we are just cleaning it away it's actually really easy to do that is it and this is the only time you will have to do that we'll be back all right, now we're at about 12 hours after the initial um, setup. You've noticed now that you pretty much can't see through the Windex at all. And uh, you'll see here that it's gone from, uh, there's our little light. It's gone from a very uh, Baja Caribbean look to still beautiful, but more of a, uh, you know, sandy beach shorefront blue water look. And uh, we've got, let's see here, let me get the light. Putting the light through, you can't see anything anymore. So it's been cleaning. So what you're seeing is ink, ink that has cleaned. There's a, a layer that's building on the bottom kind of hard to see. I'll do when the video is over, I'll pour this out so we can see what it is, what's inside. Um, but just to reiterate, as you can see, let me see if I can get it down in there more. We don't have the print head fully submerged. It's barely touching to avoid getting water in the electronic components. It's just sitting literally right on the surface of the bottom of the print head. If you look earlier in the video, you'll see it's just barely touching, just enough to get the pores um, clear. All right, here we are at 12 hours, 12 hours later, and now you can no longer see through the mixture, let alone, I'm gonna put the light behind it, and you'll see light won't even go through it. And this is how I know it's pretty much where, here's the light, and here's the mixture. It doesn't even change, right? See a little bit over here it does, but all it's doing is lighting up more so than you can't even see the light through it like this, right? So this is telling me that we're where we need to be. So I'm gonna get ready to do the next step of removing the, uh, the setup. All right, here we are. I've taken the, uh, the the tray away, and I wanted to show you underneath what the head looks like. It's much cleaner now. You can see where the ink is coming through the print heads. If you haven't seen a print head, here's a print head, right? And as you're looking here, you'll see, if you're remembering back to the beginning of the video, the liquid that I made never went above this top silver line here. It was always 
that and below. That way it didn't get anything else but above. You can kind of see some residue up there, but it never went any higher than that so that we wouldn't ruin it. Now, this needs a cleaning. We need to gently clean this area before we do a cap cleaning and a uh, print head cleaning. So we're not gonna send this in this condition back into the print head uh, rest spot. We're gonna remove this gently uh, as Epson suggests for a standard uh, cleaning around the head process, which is how we opened this up in the first place. Okay, so we're coming around with a couple Q-tips, right? In the shape of a ball. And I've dipped them in the solution that it's been sitting in for a while because it's already, right? It's helping us clean it. And I'm gently cleaning around in a front to back motion. Not a scrubbing motion, just a sweeping motion. Going around the edges to make sure that there's no residue. We just want to get as much off the print head as we can. And you'll see there's little deposits. And now we're going to go do the head print head cleaning. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a print head cleaning. And we're going to start with the uh, all nozzles. Right. We're going to do a heavy and we'll be back when it's done and then we're going to do a light and then that should be about it. All right. As we wait for it to start up, uh, we're expecting um, about a 10 minute deal and then a shorter three minute deal for a, a light cleaning and then we're going to do a, a print check. And we're going to take a look and see what we get here. As of right now, it's nice and clean and awaiting the uh, print head check. All right, now we're in the test mode. We're going to test the, uh, the print head check. And we're going to see how it comes out. Fingers crossed. And there it is. Look at that. Couple spots to work on, but all in all, that's amazing. Definitely good enough to print with. Looks like there's a couple spots that need to be cleaned. Maybe I'll work on those later if they become problematic. But guys, all there. It's hard to see with the focus, but that's all there. There's no broken spots. All there. All there, all there, all there, all there. Originally, this was gone, this was there, this was kind of there, half gone, completely gone, gone, it's half gone, completely gone. We have come back. So please click the uh, thumbs up on this video if you can, please. Subscribe, comment, let's discuss. Um, here's the timestamp. And uh, if anybody out there is struggling with their print head, and you've done a few printhead cleanings and it's been a while, um, I suggest maybe trying this method carefully at your own risk, of course. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you what's in here. Let's, I mean, I don't know if you wanna know, but I definitely wanna know. And I didn't wanna empty it until we got this. So be safe out there, guys. Please again, thumbs up and uh, good luck. All right, guys, so here we go. We're gonna see what's inside the Windex mixture. Here we go. Interesting. I thought there'd be a lot of ink in there. I'm seeing a little bit of residue. There we go. But I'm not seeing as much as I thought I would see. However, it looks like on the bottom of the plastic there's a film. There we go. Let's rub our finger through it. There we go. So it looks like there's a little bit. There's some white. So this was either backed up, free and clear, but that's what it looked like in case anybody was wondering.